Hello beautiful people, happy Sunday and welcome to your practical application of astrology and my personal story share and before I get any further I actually have an announcement uh, with Jupiter now being in Gemini I decided to introduce a new product after so many people approaching me and asking me if I teach uh, evolutionary astrology which I don't but I've decided to offer a personal private sessions one-on-one -on -one tutoring or mentoring however you want to label it. So if you are interested in evolutionary astrology and would like to deepen your understanding, then I offer one-on-one uh, -on -one personal sessions to start with. Let's see where this is going to go and how far is it going to expand. And because it's a brand new product uh, and I'm going to be growing and evolving with you, with Jupiter being inside of Gem uh, Gemini, uh, I'm offering it at a very reduced rate. So you can find all the details on my website. And if you are interested to learn with me and uh, from me then uh, this could be possibly of an interest to you so anyway so that's what I wanted to put at the front because I usually always forget to uh, mention that I actually offer readings and you can book with me because I just start talking and then I never actually get to the point of saying that actually yes I do offer readings so that is all available on my website you can find all the details for that in the captions so anyway as we know as I already mentioned Jupiter have moved in to the sign of Gemini last night where Jupiter will remain uh, until June next year I believe it's going to move into the sign of uh cancer right uh, alongside with the full moon in Sagittarius I don't have the exact date in my mind right now but I know it's happening simultaneously so we have the opportunity to expand our multidimensionality and make a lot of different choices, new choices. But as we know, it is not as easy as it sounds. And that's something that I'm going to share with regards to my own experience. But before I get to that, let me just, of course, recap what we've been experiencing this week. So at the beginning of the week, we entered into Gemini season with Sun moving into the sign of Gemini on Monday. And then we had the uh, Sun trine in Pluto on Wednesday. Uh, that was the first planet, the luminary, the trine Pluto from the sign of Gemini. Everybody entering Gemini is going to try and Pluto. That's the first aspect they all making. And then on Thursday, we had the full moon in Sagittarius, which was the illumination of the seed that got planted during the new moon in Sagittarius, which was in December 2023. And we will see the totality of that cycle in December 2024, which is when the cycle will end. So right before we had the full moon in Sagittarius on Thursday the 23rd, we experienced Venus during Jupiter conjunction on 29 degrees, then simultaneously Venus trying uh, uh, try Neptune, then Venus moved into the sign of Gemini, and then at the end of the same day, Jupiter trying Neptune, uh, sorry, not trying, sextile, Jupiter sextile Neptune. And then uh, Venus made her trine to Pluto on uh, Saturday night, well, Saturday morning, early morning or Saturday afternoon, depending where you are in the world. Jupiter moved into the sign of Gemini uh, on Saturday night, Sunday morning, depending where you are in the world. And we had a uh, moon in the sign of Capricorn uh, in, for the entire weekend, technically. Um, and yeah, that's going to shift tomorrow. On Monday, Moon is going to move into the sign of Aquarius. And there are, there are a lot of things happening next week, um, which if you would like to hear more about, you can tune into my astrological forecast, which was released on Friday, which is when, I, when I'm talking about it. And now, of course, we will be in between the two lunations, uh, integrating that which got illuminated to us uh, during this full moon in Sagittarius and therefore afterwards preparing for the new moon in Gemini which will be taking place on the six weeks portal but that's of course for another video so anyway guys as you are aware I am currently in the UK I'm actually staying with my good friend and her family so I am recording when I can <laughs> what I can because uh, there are two kids one of them is a baby in this house and I cannot record what I want when I want because the environment uh, doesn't always necessarily allow it unless you want a lot of baby crying in the background um well not of course the baby isn't crying all the time but there are, there are situations which which are not easy to control when you have a little baby in the house as i'm sure many of you know if you've gone through that situation circumstance or you are experiencing that at the moment and this once again just as it was when i was staying with my parents pre uh, presents um an opportunity for growth 
for me. Uh, my first thought, of course, would be to say challenge, but without trying to go straight away into victimhood mentality, uh, it offers an opportunity for growth and readjustments because as I've been sharing, being spiritual and fully dedicated to personal growth and my spiritual and uh, personal evolution while I was in Mexico and I didn't have to worry about anything and anyone, I was just fully um, in my own um, zone and in my own uh, energy, uh, it's easy. It's easy, but then of course this cannot continue forever and ever because as we know, life goes in cycles, we up and then we down and then we up again and we down or sometimes we just somewhere in between and sometimes we hang on in there for a while if we need the time to recalibrate. Uh, so this is how it goes. We have this times where we can um, perhaps have a little bit of a chill mode, maybe things go a little bit easier or perhaps we feel not so much is happening, not so much is changing and then things start changing rapidly or then we have all these tests and lessons from the universe which gives us an opportunity for um, getting to the next level of our evolutionary journey, I suppose. And uh, with regards to me and my personal journey and my personal story, which of course became illuminated for me just like for everybody else during this full moon in Sagittarius and me once again being in one of my homes, uh, my uh, second of the two homes that I spend the half of my life in, the UK, uh, and this is something that I already talked about in the last video, a lot of stuff is becoming um, conscious to me once again, where I have the opportunity to look at situations that are unhealed and unresolved with regards to my own experience in this lifetime uh, through the lens of what I learned in the past um, you know many months while I was in Mexico so this story is still continuing for me and now with uh, Jupiter moving into the sign of Sagittarius, Sagittarius. Jupiter moving into the sign of Gemini uh, and after post this full moon in Sagittarius during which Jupiter was still on 29 degrees of Taurus together with Venus being sextiled by this Neptune on 29 degrees of Pisces uh, which is telling us about what have we learned in this past years, decades or thousands of years of human evolution and what do we want to choose out of this to support us or to carry with us, drag with us if necessary into this next cycle. So this is literally what's going on for me and to be honest, really to be transparent, I am not finding it easy. So, you know, once again, as people might sometimes think that, oh, she's a astrologer or he's a psychic or he's a channeler, it's easy for them. They have all this help of Available, you know, like it's easy for them. They just download it, right? But that is not always the case because as I find from my own experience and also my interactions with my own clients, it is much easier for me to see the bigger picture and potentially guide or support someone else than it is to try to help me <laughs> because I'm living this story. I'm living this experience. And it's interesting because I actually gave reading to someone yesterday who was struggling with something and especially um, there was something this person couldn't see because that person is in the situation, which was very easy for me to see because I am like, you know, not living that life, not living that story. So I can just zoom out and just look at it from the higher perspective and they say, oh yeah, you know, this makes sense. This is why this is happening. This is the pattern. This is the lesson. But when it comes to my own life and my own experience, this is not easy at all because I am living it. So that's, you know, where everybody has a blind spot. Everybody needs, um, you know, like uh, someone to mirror that situation to them or potentially point something out or trigger us if necessary, because as we know, we have uh, this Mars. Um, well, we already had, right, the Mars conjunction. Uh, no, we, we we have it this week. It's coming up this week, this upcoming week. We're going to have the Mars conjunct Chiron, yes. And uh, that's something I talked about in my astrological forecast, that there might be things coming up to the surface this in this upcoming week, which are not going to be necessarily... <laughs> painless because there is this Mars conjuncting Chiron in the sign of Aries and also we are going to enter the week with Moon in the sign of Aquarius even though Moon is still is in the sign of Capricorn but is moving into the sign of Aquarius tomorrow on Monday and Aquarius is about liberation absolutely but the way to liberate ourselves is to face that which is preventing us from liberation which is usually trauma or not necessarily even our own but it's the stuff that's frozen in time so taking it back to my present moment and my current experience, uh, I can feel 
how all these unresolved things, all these unresolved stories, some of those mine, some of them not even mine, are popping up and it, I find it very, very challenging uh, to stay focused. I am so easily distracted. There are so many things that, you know, just pull in my attention from every single direction, which, you know, Gemini, of course, Gemini season, it's easy to get all, you know, this interest uh, flowing into all these different um dimension and the, all these different aspects of ourselves that want to be acknowledged and want to play um so i'm finding it challenging plus like i said there are a lot of things that are popping up for me uh, regarding these unhealed stories mine or to do with my family or to do with collective conditioning that uh, is making me very um it making it it's making it uh, challenging for me to make a decision so yes jupiter as i mentioned uh, in my astrological forecast jupiter in gemini will expand everything it touches but jupiter will expand whatever we give it to work with so it's not going to be just like oh yeah jupiter is in gemini now so we're all going to become telepathic and get all downloads all the time uh, if the ground is fertile for that and if we are prepared for that and if we've done the work then yeah 100% you know and you know like uh, of course Jupiter is going to try and Pluto next weekend. So there is definitely an opportuni uh, opportunity for jump and acceleration. And, you know, this, um, you know, like not having to have to do the step-by-step -step process always, but sometimes there are, you know, like this shortcut because we are able to tap into everything there is. You don't have to necessarily go and read all this book and study all these things to have an access to the information because this is like we opening ourselves up to multidimensionality and also to all these different versions uh, of ourselves that we've we've been before right and also all the gifts that we inherited from those who came before us and stuff like that but at the same time alongside with all these gifts and tools that we have the opportunity to tap into because this already has been done we also are tapping into that which still needs healing which is still unresolved and for majority of us are these story and topics you know because of course uranus still is in the sign of taurus uranus and jupiter have this new con new phase uh, cycle that began also venus to uranus new phase cycle has begun between the two of them and you know sun but the sun is a little bit complicated but anyway so we have all these and uh, also mercury is going to conjunct uranus this week um alongside with this mars chiron conjunction so again this could bring up st stuff to our consciousness unexpectedly that will just pop into our mind and go like oh yeah this is something that i need to resolve in order to have this quantum bleep in order to jump into this new version of myself and this new dimension and stuff so yeah so in my uh current present moment and this environment which is like <laughs> now i had to come out of my cocoon and now it's like okay now you have to do the real work the practical work the practical application not just like you know yes all studying you know and being with the spirit and channeling and meditating all day long you know which yeah, that's fantastic right but we came here to have a human experience i came here to have a humanistic experience i have taurus north node so i have to learn to have a human experience and I struggle. I really struggle. And I, I already um, shared this story of mine many times that I struggle being a human and I struggle interacting with everyday reality and practical life. It doesn't mean I can't do it. I have done it for more years than I wish I have done, but I have done it. But uh, now that I know the other, now that I know the contrast, it is not so easy, but this is something that we all trying to figure out how to do. How do we... Um, allow more these spiritual and multidimensional aspects of ourselves to be present in our everyday reality how do we put it into practice how do we ground this energy rather than just like being in one extreme or another like as i shared last time in my case being in the extreme of being in mexico completely completely removed from reality completely removed from you know people that i care about my family my friends to be able to fully dedicate myself to my to my path to my spiritual work just like hermit right being in a cave in a hermit mode like how the things used to be done before in you know in the past but that is not necessarily possible these days because these ways these days we are trying to find like okay how can we be all that and do all that but at the same time have a human experience that um, doesn't represents the you know the, the the huge conflict of it's either one or it's the other how can we have the both how can we create this new experience as human this new way of living life where this all can be present in our life 
And this is the continuous process of trial and error, of recalibrating, of trying, trying to implement these new energies and uh, ground these new energies and put it into our everyday reality. Uh, but at the same time, <laughs> trying to um, not go too much out of whack because, you know, like, um, as I said, you know, it's easy to do these things when the environment is fully supportive of that. But then, you know, like I share, being in Slovakia, for example, it is very hard for me to do these things because the environment is not supportive of that. And even though here the environment is supportive of that, but the environment has its own nature, uh, cohabiting with you know, with the family, people with who, who have children and stuff. So even though the, the the environment is supportive of that, like, oh, yeah, we like what you do, do it. But the environment itself, you know, it uh, it's not so easy. Like, it, it's so that anyway, I'm probably just talking complete rubbish here because I don't know how to express myself right now because I'm really, really, like, I'm really, really feeling these energies. I'm really, really struggling. Um and also this everything that's been passing 29 degrees of Taurus conjuncting my Mars, uh, which is the ruler of my North Node by the house rulership, because even though my North Node is in Taurus, is intercepted ruled by Aries by the house rulership. So there are all these new phases happening for me personally as well, because also my North Node got conjunct by everything con uh, that traveled through Taurus. And so my North Node is also, my natal North Node, is also in a new phase cycle with all these other planets right and uh, the new cycles always represents Aries flavor it's also this insecurity like oh yeah you know I want this new beginning I want this new direction but I have no idea what I'm doing so it's like you know even with regards to like yes what do I want to do with my career going forward what do I want to do with uh, where do I want to go where do I want to live what do I you know like how do I want the rest of my, <laughs> rest of my life even the rest of my year to look like um, and there are opportunities there are possibilities presenting themselves but then these limiting belief system come up like oh yeah but this is uh you know uh, this is not available to me right now because you know because i don't have the resources to make this possible for myself right uh, now or something so this is where i come across my own walls my own blockages that are part of my own conditioning part of my own makeup my own program which like i said some of it is my own a lot of it is not my own, a lot of it has been passed on from previous generations and my own past lives and the collective, because, you know, these are topics many people struggle with, like, oh, yeah, I want all this, but mm, I don't have the resources to make it happen. So, you know, so I just have to settle for something else. But even though we might, like, know logically you know that oh yeah but we're moving into a completely different era where all this is going to become available and we just need to tap into the frequency and manifest it and attract it to us and all that but if the subconscious doesn't believe it is that if there are still these blockages in our subconscious mind just like full moon in Sagittarius illuminated to us like you know yes Jupiter 29 degrees in Taurus yes Jupiter Venus moving Venus as the rule of the south node right moving into Gemini trying in Pluto you know Sun already trying Pluto you know now Jupiter is moved into Gemini and is going to try in Pluto there is all this opportunity for uh, expansion and all these choices However, still the south node, still this 29 degrees of Taurus, you know, still this new phase conjunction with Uranus, it's saying like, yes, it's all there, but how about this 29 degrees? What do we do with this? What we, you know, what we have the totality of understanding and familiarity with, which is like, oh yeah, but this is what I know. This is the easier one, you know, this is the thing that, uh, you know, I have done before. So it's, uh, you know, like it's, it's again, it's a, it's a mind, mindset. It's a, it's a shift of the mindset because the, the mind is saying, well, this is how it's always been and it's easier. And, you know, perhaps you're not ready. And this is something that I'm struggling with me, with my visions and dreams and aspirations with regards to what do I want going forward? What do I really want? And then straight away the blockage, the story. Yeah. But, you know, I don't have the money to do that or I can't do that or this so that's what I mean you know just just because I understand astrology or just because you know I've done certain amount of work on myself and my own growth and a lot of clearing and you know ancestor healing inner child healing whatever you name it it doesn't mean it's done it doesn't mean that yeah now it's all done and now I can just flow through life and just you know make it all happen tomorrow because there are all these things that we are still working on individually and collectively that still needs healing so even though we might feel like oh yeah i've done enough work myself 
you know, what do I, what do, why do I still have to do more work or something? But as I, again, as I shared previously, we didn't come here just to work on our own stuff. We came here to work on our own stuff at the same time as work on the ancestor stuff and at the same time as work on the collective stuff, right? So, yeah, so like I feel just, I'm again, I'm just going in circles, which is just like tells you how scattered I am right now because I feel so distracted, pulled in so many different directions. And it's literally like, I, I literally, the best analogy how I can describe it is like if, you know, somebody just put like a blindfold on me and just kept spinning, you know, like like the child children and they play the game that they put, you know, like they cover your eyes and then they turn you around you know, they turn you around and they make you stop. And, and then when you stop, the whole world is turning around. And then you don't know which direction to go because you lost your foot in. You know, you like lost the center. You you know, like everything is spinning around. And it's like, oh, yeah, there are all these possibilities, all these opportunities. We can go in all these different directions. But I don't know where is my center. You know, I, 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 you know, I feel like everything is spinning. That's literally how I'm feeling right now. So, I mean, it could be just me, you know, like I said, like I am being um, impacted personally because of all this stuff that traveled through Taurus. And then I have stuff, obviously, in all the fixed signs. So everything is being, you know, either conjuncted, opposed and squares because of the Taurus season that we had just ended. And my Chiron is in Gemini. So Jupiter is going to conjunct my IC and then Chiron right after that. So you know, there are, there are all these, and plus trying my ascendant. So there are all these things that are being activated for me, but it's the same for everyone else because Jupiter entered Gemini for everyone. This is not just my story. And, you know, uh, a lot of people of my generation have, you know, Chiron in Gemini. So, um, this is something that is going to become expanded. <laughs> it's going to get conjuncted by Jupiter, this Chiron in Gemini. And it's going to say like, okay, well, are you ready to heal this blockage that is connected to your mind, to your way of thinking, to this limitation that you put on yourself? Because in my case, personally, Mercury as the ruler, being in a sign of Aries, there is a, this necessity to step into the new direction because Mars, for me, 29 degrees of Taurus, it's saying, well, by now, you should trust yourself. I had this Jupiter-Venus conjunction on my Mars and it's literally saying like, don't you trust yourself yet? And I'm like, oh yeah, I do, you know, I do, but, you know, and there is that limiting belief system. There are the walls, the but, you know, the but, oh yeah, you know, of course I trust myself. Of course I know universe have my back. Of course I know it's going to be fine, but, you know, and that that's where that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at, where I feel like, oh, yeah, it's all spinning, you know, and there is all these things pulling at, from different direction at my attention and all these distractions, especially being in England. And like I said, it's like, you know, all these old stories just waiting, waiting to jump on me and go like, yeah, how about this? How about this? How about that? This is all unresolved. How about now you came back? Can you deal with this? You know, so it's like, yeah, when I'm in Mexico and especially new environment, new people don't know nobody. Like, I mean, I you know, there are people that I know, but, you know, I was staying in different place where I didn't know anyone I got to know these people right and also because it was Airbnb people were changing on monthly basis so it was like nice it was like yeah detach Aquarius detach and you know not so personal like I like you but stay there you know arm length right uh, and yeah and this is not the case here you know these are people that I know for years this is country where I lived for 19 years of my life going to Slovakia same story this is my family people that I knew from the beginning of my life in this lifetime and, you know, country that I spent first 19 years of my life and kept coming back to every year ever since, you know, even though the, for shorter visits, but still. So all these stories that are unresolved keep coming back. They keep coming back, especially Sagittarius full moon, limiting belief system, stories of the past, 29 degrees of Taurus. Where do we still not trust ourselves? What is preventing us, you know, with the sextile from Neptune? What do we need to adjust? What do we need to let go of? You know, what do we need to lead, resolve? What do we need to heal? What do we need to integrate? What do we need to, uh, you know, stop escaping from, right? And that's why I feel so distracted because I'm like, I I cannot even decide what to do for the second half of my year. You know, I, I, I cannot even decide when am I going to do, go, which flight should I book? You know, should I take the risk or should I take the comfort zone? You know, or is it the time to take the risk or is it the time still to create more stability? Like, what is it? So I literally feel the Gemini. I literally feel it so strongly <laughs> because Jupiter expands everything it touches. 
it expands everything it touches. So if there is a lot of confusion, if there is a lot of splits within us, where we cannot stick with one thing because we don't know what is the one thing because we don't yet trust because Mercury is in a sign of is in a sign of Taurus just about to have a conjunction with Uranus next uh, next week right I think it's a uh, Thursday I believe so anyway you know it's a uh, yeah you know Jupiter is being ruled by Mercury which is in Taurus and Mercury is in the closing phase with Uranus and it's saying like yeah you know <laughs> you know how much do you know yourself or is it still this fragmentation right Uranus all these fractures these fragmented aspects of myself because there is yes there is this aspect aspect of myself which say yeah let's just leap into the unknown and go for this new thing and who cares you know it's gonna be fine you're gonna feel figure it out somehow and then there is that aspect of me which is the stubborn Taurus you know the one stuck in a comfort zone which is saying oh yeah you know that might be a little bit too far-fetched you know that kind of choice so yeah so I guess probably many many of us and I know f like my, my friend that I'm staying with she is experiencing something very similar where there is something which yes she wants something that oh yeah this is the long-term plan you know this is what I want eventually but I am not ready yet <laughs> like yeah I, I, I plan maybe two years from now maybe three years from now and that is being pushed from her partner and you know so it's like that other aspect of ourselves you know the mirror that is saying like yeah but I want it now can we make it happen <laughs> you know there is an that is the same within us there is an aspect w w within us that says I want it now I don't want to wait you know the two three years I want it now and then there is this other aspect of us you know the fragmentation within all of us you know this other th aspect of us which has kept us protected and safe and helped us to survive for all these times all these stories throughout all these stories which says mm, you know maybe it's not the right time maybe we need more resources maybe we need more security more stability whatever it is and this is what it is, you know, this is the Jupiter now entering Gemini. All these different versions of ourselves, these multidimensional aspects of ourselves are coming in online, but so is the confusion attached to all these different aspects to ourselves if uh, we don't understand, if we don't understand what is this about, why is this here, what is unhealed within this, you know, situation or something. So... This is, again, an opportunity for growth, you know, like it, my, I remember Simon Worcester, my evolutionary astrology teacher, he used to say that, oh, you know, he thought that, oh, when Jupiter, you know, enters, um, I think it was actually maybe when Jupiter was last in Gemini and, you know, he was like, oh, you know, like uh, wherever it was, but it was something entering, some, you know, Jupiter was entering somewhere in his chart and he said like, yeah, you know, now I'm going to like, actually it might have been when Jupiter entered Sagittarius, where he said, now are we going to like expand and, you know, it's going to be all this amazing, we're going to have all this knowledge and stuff. And he said, you know what actually happened? What happened was that, ooh, that's when I realized how little I know, how much more I need to learn, all these insecurities, you know, do I know enough? You know, uh, am I, am I ready? Am I, uh, you know, whatever, you know? So, yeah. So that's what I mean. Jupiter is going to expand everything it touches, but Jupiter expanding out of our multidimensionality is also going to expand those and bring into our attention those aspects of our multidimensional selves, you know, the past versions of ourselves. And like I said, you know, the ancestors, the, the collective, because nothing is happening, in, you know, separation anymore. Everything is becoming very consciously connected. It's always been, but now we're becoming very conscious about it. So this is also being expanded. Like, oh, yeah, I really feel it now, you know, all these uh, splits within me, which are pulling me in all these different directions, and all this coping mechanism, like, oh, yeah, let's just focus on this other thing, you know, let's, let's not worry about that, you know, and then it's, it's literally, it's like a mayhem, like, I, I seriously don't know if this is how it is for other people, like, I can only speak for myself, but since I came back from Mexico, I feel like I'm on a roller coaster, just spinning, <laughs> just spinning, you know, spinning and spinning, and especially now, and I really, it's so weird, because, you know, when I was in Slovakia, I really thought, like, oh, okay, you know, it's Slovakia, I know what to expect, it's fine, you know, two weeks and I'll go to England and I have a, you know, a little bit of a break because, you know, England has different energy for me and it's away from my family. So it's like, oh, it's going to be easier. It's going to be easier in England. Mm, not really, because I, I don't know. I just feel really, 
I can't even put labels on it, but I feel so like scat like I really feel so fragmented, like so scattered, but I'm pulled in so many directions and I am so like that the, the monkey mind is like for real, you know, it really is for real. This Jupiter in Gemini, like seriously, it's for real. Like this continuous chitter chatter, like what choice are you gonna make? What choice are you making? Why are you making this choice? You know, are you ready for this choice? You know, and then all these questions, all these questions, like all these insecurities, all these old stories, everything coming to the surface. And it's like bombardment. And then I'm even thinking, like, am I being hijacked? You know, am I being hijacked so I can't focus on my work? You know, with all this distraction or what is it? You know, so I really don't know. I really don't know the answer to that. I don't know whether everybody is having this kind of experience right now where they just feel like they are losing their mind, literally, because like they're, the, the, our, I don't know if our, my brain, it feels like it's been blown out of the proportion and there is just this continuous pressure and I'm even trying to think like do I have any squares you know but I don't have anything in Virgo I don't have anything in Pisces you know obviously Jupiter you know is far away from square in Saturn yet so I'm literally thinking like I, I am not aware of any squares. Oh, well, yeah, obviously. Pluto is coming into square with my Pluto, but that's not till next year, but it's still, it's within the degree already, of course, but Pluto is retrograde. But I feel so much pressure to make a different choice. So much pressure. But at the same time, there are these stories that I feel are like uh, holding me back. I'm holding myself back that are operating on this, you know, fear and this old pattern that are saying, oh, well, it's not the right time yet. It's not the right time yet. Like maybe you need another year, you know, another year to take that kind of risk or something. So anyway, I know that I'm just going to in cycles and in a sense, <laughs> this is like for me trying to figure it out for myself, like what's going on? And again, like I, I you know, I wonder how is this, how do you, how is this showing up for other people? But I really feel like, you know, that every time that we think like, oh yeah, Gemini season, that's going to be easy. You know, Gemini season, oh yeah, it's going to be much lighter. And Jupiter going into a Gemini, that's going to be so much easier than Jupiter in Taurus, for sure, right? Mm, I don't know. Maybe for other people that don't have Jupiter, well, don't have Chiron in Gemini, maybe. <laughs> maybe, you know, for, for Pulto Libra who have Chiron mostly in Taurus, maybe they had the hard time there when Jupiter was touching the Chiron and going like, eh, hey, you know, we need to we need to heal this thing. You know, we need to learn the truth about this Chiron over here. But now, you know, my generation with Chiron in Gemini, now Jupiter's going to go and <laughs> kick that butt. And it's like... Mm, I don't know, I can feel it, I can feel it, you know, this Jupiter closing to my Chiron is like, oh, you need to make a different choice, oh, you need to start thinking about this differently, oh my gosh, so anyway, guys, I, as you can tell, I'm not really making much sense, so I'm probably going to stop myself here, I managed to still talk for half an hour about nonsense, <laughs> but as you can see, this is a Gemini season 2.0, where... You know, even this steady Taurus is losing it. Um, and yeah, I still have another week in the UK. So let's see what's going to happen next week with all these interesting aspects that we have going on. And as I said, this is now preparation for the new moon in Gemini. With, by then, Mercury in Gemini. Mercury is still in the sign of Taurus, but by then Mercury will be in Gemini, trying in Pluto. <laughs> so it's like, oh, okay. Let's see how that's going to work out for us. Because we know that Mercury is playing a very important, sneaky, behind-the-scene role. Because Gemini and Mercury is how we connect with our reality. And we are being really, really pushed. Really, really pushed. You know, like, okay, we need to start connecting in a different way. So that's why these stories are coming up the stories of the past, because if there is this desire by the soul, like we need to start interacting in a different way, live life differently. There are all these million stories of the past that's going to come up and tell us why we can't do it. <laughs> and why is it not possible? And why we should just stay put in that comfort zone? So yeah, you know, let's see. So anyway, guys, I'm just going to share the message that I channeled for myself yesterday because now my, as I said, my schedule is not so linear and like, oh yeah, I, I do this and I do this and I do this, like in my chronological order of things and how I want them done. No, I can only do things when I can do them and then I just have to kind of put things together to make sense out of them and be able to produce something. So this is what I channeled for myself yesterday. As I said, this is a personal message uh, because I feel like I, <laughs> I need the support 
word over here, you know, spirit. But I know that whatever I'm experiencing, somebody out there is experiencing also. And perhaps somebody else also finds these messages uh, useful. So anyway, so this is what I received. You are, uh, you are moving on your evolutionary path through the passages of growth filled with learning and adjustments. Life is never just a straight linear line. It's full of ups and downs, ups and flows. It's all part of the experience of being a human. Sometimes you rise and sometimes you will fall. Have a compassion for all these different aspects of yourself because you are not just one linear identity. You are an extension of the universe and the entire universe lives within you ready to be expressed. Your understanding and comprehension of reality you are experiencing at this time is rap rapidly expanding and widening. So is your perception of the reality you are manifesting and interacting with on a daily basis. Everything is expanding and multiplying at an accelerated rate. The universe is desiring new things, new directions and new experiencing of realities. Therefore, the wheel is turning and it is turning fast. Sometimes it's hard, hard to catch your breath and get your head around it all. It is not actually humanly possible to understand everything that is going on right now, so don't try to grasp it all. Just live your life and live it in a way that brings you joy and a sense of purpose and fulfillment, whatever that means to you. Don't go to others looking for the meaning and purpose of your life. The other is your teacher, your mirror. But the mirror is only there to show you the depth of wisdom that exists within you being alive and being human at this time is a revolutionary experience not necessarily easy or fully enjoyable however this incarnation this is an incarnation like no other these are very unique times you are experiencing very exciting times full of opportunities and possibilities uh, that were not readily available to the extent they are now in the times lived previously. Cherish the present moment and enjoy the ride. As everything, it will have its ups and downs, so savor the ups and be patient and compassionate with yourself through the downs. Nothing ever lasts forever and the wheel is uh, always turning and surely it will turn again. It's a never-ending pro process of growth, expansion and evolution. There's always more to be experienced and being alive on planet Earth at this time offers ample amount of experiences and choices to choose from. Some of those are destined and unavoidable because uh, they are part of your unique soul's path and desired evolutionary tra trajectory. However, most you have a free will to choose. The choice is yours. So what are you going to choose? What do you wish to experience that fills you with a sense of joy and wonder? What if everything you ever wanted was available to you right now? What's preventing you from believing that it's possible? The universe loves you unconditionally, so why would it not want the best for you? Believe you deserve to have what you want and open yourself up to receiving it. Sometimes it's much easier than you think. So what's stopping you from trying, beloved? Make a wish and it might just come true because you are unconditionally loved by the unlimited source always. So here we go, a little bit of a support from the spirit and I'm going to pull some cards. I have some new decks which I'm very excited about. So here is one of my escapism, getting more decks. But this one is... Um, actually really, I mean, really intrigued. This is the new art, well, new artist for me, Susie Cherub, which I uh, already pulled the card from her Star Temple Oracle. And now I have a new deck, Oracle of Delphi. So I have some interesting decks to pull cards from. Uh, and they all, all a little bit, <laughs> they are all a little bit mystical because this is how I feel. You know, everything gets a bit of a bit of a mystery. So let's just go and pull some cards to give us some guidance with regards to this so anyway let's let's go for oracle of delphi uh prophecies from the eternal priestess and this is the first time i'm using this deck so bear with me 
So Oracle of Delphi, what is the guidance for us at this time? What are we allowed to know with regards to what we're going to going through and experiencing? Okay. What? I really struggle with shuffling these big <laughs> big decks of cards. Okay, this one. Faith. <laughs> Sounds about right, yeah? Number 41, which is a number 5. But then again, 4 is the stability. 1 is the new beginning. But 4 and 1 is 5, which is the number of change. Hope, anticipate, aspire and foresee. And look at this beautiful woman, all in white, at the gateway. Archway, gateway. And there is all this beautiful magical forest with all this gold. Like a golden stars around it, the golden age. And there is all this spirit. You can see the spirit. And she is approaching a gateway. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but there is an orb. There is like an orb, you know, the spirit. So we need to have a faith that that entryway, the opening that is presenting itself, will lead to something really magical. So this is a really beautiful card. I love these cards. This deck is so beautiful. Like, I think it's going to be one of my new favorites. Um, so anyway, let's see what this faith want to tell us. Okay, faith. Clear credence signs uh, the signs the song of the heart. Great supports bound, boundless self belief. Surrender. Walk with faith and trust in the power of the divine. Listen to the spirit whispers from the other side. You are entering a new phase of life. It is time. Step up with strong belief in your inborn and learned abilities be certain of your own capacity to move, move forward fearlessly self-reliance taurus spurs you headfirst into a bright future your crystal clear vision guides you forward onto your golden pathway tap into the utmost influence of faith hope and love if you are finding it challenging to embody your self-trust rely on the higher power of universal love faith is until you make it brave heart the goddess supports your every move. The universe has, has you covered. It is safe to follow through with your new plans. When you lead with your heart and self-assurance, everything will fall into place. Be brave and get out of your comfort zone. <laughs> this is like speaking to me really strongly. <laughs> Take the first step in faith, trusting that the next step will magically appear as you sense your way forward. You are a leader of light, pioneer. Jump forward with faith in action. Do not stay in places you have outgrown. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, guys. This feels like it's a personal message for me. But I I really hope that this is also a personal message for someone else. You might have been let down by people around you in the past. Allow the power of love to heal your heart and reinstate your confidence in life and relationships so you can glide gracefully forward. Find the golden lessons hidden in the pain of previous disappointments. The past makes you wiser, more discerning and clearer on your values and priorities. This refined clarity makes you more perceptive of people and situations. Leave the past in the past and stop worrying about the future as you only ever have the present moment. Divine timing is a powerful force that synchronizes opportunities to happen at the right time and for a significant reason. Trust that your life is unfolding in a meaningful way. Try not to control it. Deep down you know what you want for yourself. Stop fixating on future and regretting the past. This is your time to soar. You have been waiting for this moment to rise and stride gracefully into a rainbow light to be reborn astonishing surprises await you on the other side step up nine now and the oracle prof prophecy is optimism returns bringing joyful blessings chakra heart carries hopefulness talisman the golden gateway represents a heart portal of universal love that helps you defeat your inner demons and gain self-belief faith in action step gather the courage to leap with unf unfathomable Mabel faith. Do not look back. Move forward with strong belief and an open heart. Alignment activation. Look ahead and step up with hope in your heart. Declare to the universe, I flow with faith. I trust the divine supports my every move. My confidence builds with every step. Artist inside. Step forward with faith. Get out of your comfort zone. Trust that the universe has your back. 
I mean, come on. And at the bottom, we have lovers. <laughs> Unite, desire, cherish, and carriers. I am not going to read the interpretation for that one because these are very long messages, but this is, you know, uniting with the spirit and also uniting with ourselves. And yeah, lovers in tarot is the card of choice. Actually, let's just read it. You know, I'll change my mind. There is a reason why this card is there. Okay, let's see. And it's number 13, which actually in the traditional tarot is the card of death, right? Scorpio. So here we go. And it's a full moon. <laughs> full moon. And look at all the blue connection with the um, third eye chakra. Unite, desire, cherish, and carriers. Okay, well, let's read it. If it's there, there is a reason for it. Let's read it then. Number 13, number number 13, which is number four. <laughs> Again, Saturn is poking its head. Okay. The chemistry of love cannot be explained, only felt with the heart. Love wraps its uh, arms around you. Love is pure, unconditional acceptance. The starry-eyed Apollo and Daphne signify that the flourishing love is coming for you. Sparks are flying. The attraction between you is electrifying. You are being called to fully embrace each other. Wholehearted love requires vulnerability and complete surrender. If you are in a relationship, this might mean a reawakening of your passion or that uh, a future commitment is unfolding for you both the full moon amp amplifies your love and your ecstatic rapture even more your sacred union is infused with a profound spiritual connection true love evolves with deep commitment and care this message may also signify that you cannot force a loving connection it is not about you if the stars are not aligning with the current love interest, do not take it personally. Embody the loving qualities you want in your relationship. Self-devotion is a magnet for boundless passion, love and spiritual union. Clarify how you want to feel in your relationship and only stay where you are valued, heard, seen and respected. If you are in a toxic relationship, this card serves as a reminder that you deserve a love that is pure, true and unconditional. Love yourself enough to know when it is time to let go of connection that brings you more sorrow than joy in white in balanced conscious connection connections that are fully available to you get crystal clear about the non-negotiable values you want to share true love awaits you on the other side the blue lotus in this oh yeah the lotus flowers in the water yeah the blue lotus in this mesmerizing art is often referred to as a dream flower. In the ancient Mediterranean, the hallucinogenic essence of its leaves has known to be mind-expanding. <laughs> Jupiter in Gemini, right? <laughs> mind-expanding and the intoxicating fragrance of an aphrodisiac. It was believed to temp a, stare, a state of intense longing for union with another. The spirit of a blue lotus heartens you to dream your beloved into existence. It all starts with self-love. If you can see love, feel love, know love and be love, then you can fully embrace love. The oracle's prophecy, intoxicating love is in the air, heart, chakra, heart, again. The vortex of multifaceted love, Gemini. Talisman, the blue lotus, denotes the pursuit of attainment of euphoric love. As a natural aphrodisiac, it is set to, set to connect one to the divine, in, induce higher states of love consciousness and enhance desire, passion and intimacy. Faith in action step, cultivating deep self-love so that you have an abundant overflow of love to share with others. Stand in front of a mirror, look lovingly into your eyes and state out loud three things you love about yourself. Alignment activation lean into your heart and state by your grades i attune to the highest vibration of love i embody the qualities i want to attract into my love life meaningful connections deepen my love quest artist insight divine union unity of sacred feminine and masculine and euphoric bliss yeah and this is exactly where we're heading right the golden age of the aquarius the connection the um, conscious relationships the connection from the different way but it's all about Taurus <laughs> we need to start from ourselves so it's also about what do we feel we deserve right it's like you reach for what you know but no we 
<laughs> yeah, we reach for what we know, but how can we reach for what we what we want if we if we don't feel like we deserve it? And this is the main blockage, you know, because of the south node in Libra, because we were being made to feel unworthy, right? So it starts with us, yeah, and then there is the gateway, you know, the the new reality we are creating. It's all coming from heart. It will not come from the head. <laughs> so anyway. Because we're going to continue on this topic, the, the, the second card, well, the second deck I'm going to use is the Sacred Destiny from Denis Lin. This is not a new deck, but it's a new deck for me. So let's see what a Sacred Destiny, and it says, the card to discover the landscape of your soul. I just feel into this. <laughs> I'm feeling into this <laughs> destiny and prophecies and mysteries. Um, mode right now because i'm like so confused so like i'm i'm in a state like okay i need some guidance over here so i really hope that this is helpful to someone else as well and also we discard you know the lover's card you know apart from that being the number 13 which is the death card in a tarot and apart from that being the number four which four is the emperor right but also four is the number of saturn and apart from that all you know lovers is about the choice is the gemini but i really feel that it's also the choices that we are and this is something that again has been coming up for me through my client as well you always have to choose you and not in a selfish way that i don't care you know but a lot of people sacrifice because they don't feel that their needs or that they are worthy or they deserve you know so i feel you know this card what it really signifies is again you know like us reconnecting with ourselves our self-love our self-worth our sense of who we are and what we deserve and then um visualizing to creation you know and attracting to creation that better reality for ourselves that better connections those better relationships better partnerships because we know that everything is relational over here on planet earth is all this mirroring that we are experiencing law of attraction so how are we going to attract a different better reality like well by becoming <laughs> this different version of ourselves where we connecting with ourselves through our heart and with the reality we experiencing through our heart so anyway this is what i'm really like tapping into here like it's this um the lovers doesn't signify just like a relationship with someone else even though it is a part of it but first and foremost is this different way of relating different way of having relationship with oneself and with another and it all starts with you need to choose you you need to choose you the self-love has to be num the number one the most the, the most important thing and again this is not this is not selfish this is from the point of well if we don't know ourselves and we don't feel worthy then we're going to attract people that's going to teach us that we need to start putting boundaries and loving ourselves and feeling worthy because people are not going to i mean in some cases yes there are people who really like um you know saved people and transformed their life and stuff and you know this is of course you know everything is um each person's life and story is unique but in many cases we are attracting predominantly people who are teaching us you know that which we don't know how to do which in many cases is self-love boundaries self-respect self-worth self-esteem all these kind of things so anyway let's go about sacred destiny sacred destiny what is the guidance from sacred destiny for for the collective okay for the collective please spirit guidance from ooh, 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 ooh. okay we have two potential or oh, three <laughs> okay we have three and guess what <laughs> oh my gosh we had faith here right the faith faith right you have to have a faith and guess what we have here trust <laughs> you know look we're sailing into the unknown we sailing into the nano with the crescent moon, you know, this beautiful, magical place. We have to have trust. Then we have a transformation. <laughs> because, yeah, number 13, the death card is the Scorpio, which is all about transformation. Oh, this is the back of the card, by the way. It's beautiful, isn't it? But it's the butterfly transformation. And look, the solar plexus and the, the third eye, the third eye, the blue, you know. So the I am with the higher power, the ego mind, there has to be a balance between the human self and the higher self, the ego mind and the higher mind. And then the rose, you know, like, um, which is kind of like 
I would say it's like a golden, you know, which is the golden age, the higher, and all these butterflies, transformation, you know, and the bloom. We are all in the different stages, and then we have the potential, the potential, you know, the high mountains and the, the sky, the sky covered with the stars, the, the potential that is unexplored. Okay, and at the bottom of the deck, we have fulfillment, the peach fulfillment, and there is another full moon over there, and it's all this yellow and orange creativity. Solar plexus and sacral chakra, the fruit, the fruits of our labor. You know, we have a potential to grow the fruits that we want to reap. Yeah, it's all of that. Having a faith on our journey to the unknown, we have to transform. We're going through a process of metamorphosis, but there is all this potential to come to the fruition of that which we desire. Okay, let's see how long are these messages, because, you know, do I want to read interpretation of fourth cards? Let's see. <laughs> trust. Okay. Oh, that one is the... Oh, no, this is the truth. Okay, trust. Ah, oh, here. This uh, desert vision. Trust, this one. The desert seems part... Oh, this is the... Oh, yeah, there is the desert here. I was just looking at the water, but yes, there is a desert. The desert seems parched and devoid of life, yet it is uh, to the desert that spiritual sojourns go to gain messages from the Creator. Traditionally, the desert is the place of spiritual cleansing, renewal, and profound healing visions. Just as desert ter terrains can feed our souls, they also nourish lands thousands of miles away. For example, the Sahara Desert and the Amazon Rain Forest are a great distance from each other. One is vast and and dry air of sand and scrub while the other is moist, lush and green and yet they are connected. Annually, thousands of tons of nutri nutrient-rich dust from the Sahara crosses continent to the upper at atmosphere and deposits vital phosphorus and other minerals to the Amazon which is needed for the uh, of which is needful of these exact nutrients. The sacred landscape wants you to know. This is a powerful and important card to receive, even when things seem parched or not fruitful. And it's interesting, at the bottom we have the fruit. Uh, not fruitful. A deeper energy speaks of the power of your inner, inner knowing. Meditate. Trust these nudges from the universe. Your celestial advisors are closed now. You are now open to receive some of the most important messages of your life through your intuition. Your intuition is spot on, so trust it. And even if there are some areas of your life that seem lackluster, know that other areas are being fertilized for a re resplendent future. Have faith and know that there is a higher purpose. Okay, so there is that faith. Then we have the transformation, the butterfly. Blue butterfly. Here we go. It's no accident that the butterfly represents transformation, rebirth, and resurrection. Remarkably, when the caterpillar becomes a chrysalis, it doesn't just instantly become a butterfly. It actually dissolves into a kind of soup. In other words, it liquid uh, liquefies itself, and out of that emerges something completely different. It is a true transformation. In some class cool cultures, blue butterflies are considered very good luck and even wish, gr uh, wish granted. Granters. In Native American tribes, it is believed that a wish whispered to a butterfly will be granted when it flies to the heavens. The Native American shallow dance, which uh, celebrates renewal, is derived from the butterfly dance. Also, the color blue represents a calmness, peace, and spiritual attunement, and the blue butterflies is thought to uh, carry all these meanings. The sacred landscape wants you to know. This is the time for change, reinvention, and rebirth into a new way of being. If you've been plodding along, this card suggests that you take measures to shift everything. Don't resist change. The blue color suggests a spiritual renewal or initiation. Transformation doesn't mean taking something old and remodeling it or rearranging a few things. It means becoming something completely different or doing something completely different. Change is often uncomfortable, but it is usually for the highest good. This is a very lucky card, and drawing this card can mean that a wish might be about to come true. 
I mean, they say blue butterfly, but there is a part of it that's yellow, and I just noticed here is the nautilus, nautilus shell, right? The evolution, the continuous evolution. There we go. So that's about the transformation. So we already have about this trust and everything that's happening, you know, it's, <laughs> it's uh, fortified, well, it's nurturing us in some way. And because we're going through this process of metamorphosis, now let's see about the potential, about these high mountains that are, we are here to climb. Potential. Volcano at rest. Volcanoes erupt in places where the earth plates meet and where there are cracks through which lava emerges, either explosively by flowing more slowly down uh, a cinder, cinder cone. Even when a volcano is at rest, there is always the possibility of a huge eruption. There is the potential of great power. There are very few things on this planet more commanding than an erupting volcano. The archetypal personality of a volcano is one of a wild, wild, unpredictable and formidable energy. The sacred landscape wants you to know. This card appears when you are ready to activate your potential and step into your strength. This is the time to activate those gifts that you've had on the back burner in your life. If you have incredible untapped potential, this is the time to allow it to flow. An inner well spring of power is emerging. You have the profound spiritual power that is deep within you. Do not doubt your great authority and capabilities. A dormant volcano might indicate that you have uncomfortable emotions that you are repressing or keeping inside, thus creating emotional stress and inner pressure. It can also mean that you are on the verge of great expansion of energy and life force. Well, it goes well with the others, right? We have to have a faith because we are going through a process of metamorphosis and something is about to erupt, which is our potential. And that's why this is the year of strength, the year that represents the card or ruled by Leo, right? The sun, uh, the strength card with the Leo on it because uh, we are here to step into our purpose. <laughs> and usually we're going to do that under pressure, you know, because the Leo is in opposition with this Aquarius, unpredictable thing, like the volcano, eruptions, Aquarius. Okay. And this was at the bottom, fulfillment with the beautiful peach. Peach, fulfillment, let's see. Laden peach tree. The peach tree blooms early and because of this, it is often a symbol of spring and the renewal of life. <laughs> right because everything is being renewed because we are in a process of metamorphosis it is also a chinese symbol of happy marriage or an end of fertility in some tra tradition it stands for immortality immortality ripe peach is also portrayed fertility f fecundity and great fulfillment in korean traditions the peach represents happiness riches honors and longevity in the renaissance speech is represented the heart and love and speaking of truth from one's heart the sacred landscape wants you to know fulfillment is at hand no matter what is occurring in your life put your attention on what is splendid pleasurable and luscious the find bliss in the moment Love fully, deeply, without hesitation. Cherish your friendships. Fill your life with people, experiences and places that give you delight. Let go of people and things that don't feel empowering and that drag your energy down. <laughs> Sounds like this card, right? You no longer need to put the needs of others ahead of your own needs. If you've had any health issues, and ripe peach represents a return to better health. Savor your life with gusto and with grace. Experience and embrace li life in all its uh, permutations. Permutations, yeah. If you want to conceive a baby or a new project or start a new relationship, this card is an excellent omen for a great outcome. So this was at the bottom and so was this. So we know we're going through all these things, you know, because this is where we're going, you know, that's the hidden message. And also we are entering through a new gateway, uh, you know, like there is a portal we are approaching, you know, in order to get here, you know, to create a better life, to create better relationship, to create all that abundance, you know, under the full moon, the wish fulfillment, right? Full moon. On both of these cards, we have full moon. Right? Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, and the last deck I'm going to quickly pull a card from is my other soul deck. This is a pocket version. My mystical shaman. 
yeah, from Colored Baron Raid, and yeah, this deck never, never lies. So let's see what the mystical shaman wants to tell us. Well, we already had a message from the Oracle of Delphi and from the Destiny. So let's say what the shaman wants to tell us now. Okay. Okay. Shaman message for to complete this reading. Okay. We have again three cards. Okay. Hunter, Middle World and Council. Number 11, number 36, which, oh my god, 36, which is the 9, 27, which is the 9, and 11. You know, we have these three cards, and at the bottom is Pachamama, which is the number 40, which is the planet Earth, Pachamama. So, Hunter, Middle World. So, Hunter and Hunted, what are we hunting for? We are hunting... Uh, I, wasn't this the card that came up last time? Or maybe it just came up for me, but I've seen this card recently. Hunter. You know, be the hunter, not the hunted. And it's number 9, 27, closing the cycles, having the opportunity to face that which is hunting us, or hunting us, right? Um, and uh, become the hunter, choosing our own experience. And the 36, middle world, and all these birds, we are in between in between the past and the future, putting down the roots, foundation for the future, and also that a cycle, circle and cycle, circle and cycle, and the council, i never seen this card before, number 11, higher power, number 11 is, oh, and there is a new moon there, new moon, the council number 11, this is a master number frequency, and like I said, Pachamama at the bottom, okay, let's see. Let's see what this all wants to tell us. Okay, let's start with the hunter there. 27. The hunter. The essence. Before the dawn of agriculture, we, hunt, we hunted in the forest to feed our kin. The hunter never takes more than the village needs to survive, often taking one more creature, the good killed. Uh, the good kill. He is a master tracker who knows which path to follow to find success. The invitation, rely on your own skills to traverse the thick forest you are in to reach your destination. You need to follow the tracks left by spirit to claim your bounty, which is already prepared and being offered to you. Do not follow the maps drawn by others. Oh my God, this is like in a channel me message. Um, as they will not lead you through. Instead, become the map maker, find your internal compass and use all your senses, including your common sense. The medicine, don't settle for the roadkill. It could be poison. Be careful that you do not become the prey of your desires and fantasies. Remember to not want more than you need, so you are not guided by un you know, unbridled ambition. It is okay to come home empty-handed. So be clear about what we want, right? Follow the signs. Also, I feel, you know, with the, with the ancestors, learning from the mistakes of the past and, uh, again, um, taking the gifts, taking the gifts of that which was learned before, which is available to us. So that's number nine, closing the cycles. Another number nine is the middle, middle world, three and six, 36. 36. The essence, the middle world is a realm of day-to-day -day reality and the play playground of the living. It is the present moment where everything is happening, yet the middle world is created by, by the future, not only the past. It is the mirror of the invisible realms. When things are right in the middle world, heaven and earth support everything. When they are not right, heaven and earth must be brought into order as well. The invitation, the middle world shows up when conditions are favorable to your undertaking. Do not hesitate move forward as heaven and earth are sm smiling upon you the time is right so be expedient but mindful of not being reckless the world is your playground and what you require uh, and what would require great effort and any other time can be accomplished with ease right now the medicine do not not try to correct in do not try to correct in the earth what needs to be corrected in the heavens. The resources to support the change or endeavor you are considering are not readily available to you yet, so it's important to ask for help from the invisible realms, uh, from hel helpers in the upper world for now. Wait. So this is when the card is challenged. You know, if we don't feel that it's the right time, we ask for help. If you 
you know, sure about what it is the next thing for you, then um, is the time, um, well, you know, you'll be blessed, the action, when the action is taken, you know, here, um, accomplished with ease right now. And then the number 11, the council, does this one, the card which I have not seen before. The essence, the councils are the luminous beings who hold the collective wisdom of humanity. They are the ones before whom you will do your life review when you cross into the world of spirit. A life review is when we place our good and our bad deeds on a divine scale and uh, attempt to explain why we did not love or forgive or dare, dare as greatly as we might have. Know that their wisdom is available to you at all times when you live in the state of yes in an unconditional relationship with life. They remind you of your place around the sacred fire which has been reserved for you since the beginning of time. You will claim it when you own, when you own your inner wisdom. The invitation, the council has a message for you. Listen with your inner senses. The handwriting is already on the wall, so look about you and you will discern its meaning. Do not wait for further signs. Embark on the journey to love deeply, forgive sincerely and dare greatly. Take a leap without requiring life to assure you of success. And when challenged, the medicine, you are never alone. Turn to the council to find the guidance you seek and listen to the voice that arises spontaneously. Turn a deaf ear to, the na to that nagging voice from your ego that tells you that you are not up for the task before you create a spiritual feast for the council. Invite them to your altar every time you meditate and pray. Okay, so this makes perfect sense. Okay, let's just read the Pachamama as well, but I can see exactly what is this saying. So this is the one that was at the bottom, the Pachamama. Number 40, Pachamama is the Earth. Mother Earth. The essence, Pachamama represents the unconditional love that the Earth has for all her children, including the stones, plants, animals and humans. She is a, the goddess of Earth, also known as Gaia, who pervades all creation on our planet. Thanks to Pachamama, our timeless soul can experience life in a biological body. The joy and pain we taste during our brief time on Earth are invitations to discover the boundless love of Pachamama. The invitation, you are a child of the Earth. Now is the time to eat right, love right, and be joyous, regardless of the circumstances you might find yourself in. Be grateful for your life, your body, uh, and all that nourishes you. Pachamama, Mama invites you to relish each breath, embrace your joy and your pain equally and discover love through both. Let Pachamama know how much you appreciate all her blessings with an act of service such as planting, planting the tree, helping save an endangered species or protecting the ocean. The medicine. You still believe that you have been cast out of the Garden of Eden, that you are motherless and homeless. You suppose that you need to work very hard to survive or thrive. It is time to stop suffering. Let go of that old myth and realize that you, you were given the garden to rejoice and to become its steward. Your melancholy is really a longing to return to the heart of Pachamama. Listen deeply to the mother who is always there for you walk in beauty and honor all life so yeah so once again you know with this card and they're all like perfectly connected of course as always because it's saying that walk in the path you know like let's use the wisdom of those who walk before and try to learn from the mistakes of the path and live more in alignment uh, you know, with nature, really, because, of course, this is a shamanic deck. And then Middle World is, again, about that uh, everyday reality, you know, the life on planet Earth that needs to be balanced, the the future that is being created in the present and the past that is still impacting our present and turn to, for, for help to the light, to the light being, because we are part of we are part of life, we are part of source, we came from source and we return to the source and then we have the stability, the Pachamama, so we are being supported by the earth and by the, by the heaven, just like here, you know, the earth and the heaven, you know, just like that card said, don't try to fix on earth what needs to be fixed by, the, you know, through the heaven, so it's all about the alignment and balance and listening to the sign, reconnecting to intuition 
but also be uh, connected to earth it's interesting that all these bottom cards were um, <laughs> jumping all these cards at the bottom of the decks were all about this fruition and this better you know like this this reality that is um, full of bounty and abundance because Pachamama always provide because while we are here on planet earth we are being unconditionally loved and provided by, by, by Mama, by the Mother Earth. And even if we feel lost, there is always a help from our origin, from the light, from the source to guide us forward, to help us understand the tracks that's been left by those that walk the path before and in the present to create a better future. So anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. But... You know, just through these cards, we know exactly what's happening. <laughs> we are on a path of entering into a... And we know that, we've known that for a while. But um, we are on a precipice of entering into something completely different, completely new. We are on our way, right? We are going through a process of metamorphosis. There is an eruption that is wanting to be acknowledged and expressed. You know, this uh, stagnation that wants to erupt so the things can move again because we are creating a different future, a better future for all of us, which is in alignment with Earth. You know, it's alignment with Earth because at the moment there is no balance. Okay, guys, too long message, so I'm going to leave it. I hope that... Um, it resonated with someone. I wish everybody a wonderful rest of the weekend. If you're still watching this on Sunday, if not, have a great week ahead. And I'll speak to you again soon in a divine time. Much love, everyone. And if you would like uh, to take advantage of my uh, mentoring lessons, then reach out. Much love, everyone. Bye for now.